welcome everyone uh, to this webinar on Deep Learning TensorFlow from the HPD. <clears throat> I am your host, Yasin Hariri, Senior Engineer Platform Design at CMC Microsystems. Uh, so all your uh, microphones are muted now. Uh, they will be unmuted at the end of the webinar to allow you to ask questions. You can always use the, the chat window in order to ask questions as well. So I will start by uh, a general agenda of this uh, webinar. So first of all, some news of, uh, from CMC and the upcoming events. <clears throat> then a quick recap on, of the artificial intelligence applications and deep learning. Then the second part of the webinar, we will dive into uh, some details about TensorFlow uh, with an overview and installation of the HPT and some discussion around the potential of accelerating uh, this deep learning framework on a heterogeneous processing platform. And we will conclude with a demo. I will allow you to ask some questions at the end of this webinar. So CMC is a not-for-profit uh, corporation federally incorporated in 1984. Uh, we create and manage the Canadian National Design Network and we deliver core micro and nano technology innovation capabilities to every region in Canada. The Canadian National Design Network is a wide a collaborative project between 63 universities and colleges to connect 9,400 academic participants with 950 companies to design, make, and test microsystems prototypes. So the mission is to define, develop, and manage the Canadian National Design Network. And here we have some statistics about our community. This slide summarizes five key services that CMC offers to their clients. It's uh, about design tools, including CAD tools and software, fabrication services to create working prototypes, equipment and services for prototyping and testing, training and support and network management, including connecting and mentoring clients. I would like to take the opportunity of this webinar to uh, talk a little bit more about the upcoming event. There are two main events that we are planning uh, in the next uh, couple of months. The first one is a seminar series. Uh, it's about configuring uh, your research platforms. And the main topic is infrastructure needs for embedded and heterogeneous computing. Three locations, three dates. Uh, I will give in the next slide more details about this uh, series of uh, seminars. And the second one is Innovation 360. This is our annual gathering of Canada National Design Network, which includes Expo uh, competition for graduate students and research competition. So this is scheduled for October 23 and 24. For more information about this event and how to register, you can always visit our website. Now, the three seminars I announced in the previous slides, uh, here is some information about these three seminars. So the main objective is, uh, is uh, the, the, the discussion about the needs and specifications for tools and platforms for application-specific instruction set processor or ASIPs and hardware accelerators. Open source processors technologies such as RISC-V, cloud-based heterogeneous computing cluster, and support for implementing artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this, the seminar is one day and it will cover all aspects of computing from the edge of the network to the cloud. And uh, the afternoon session will be focused on uh, running AI algorithms and machine learning on heterogeneous computing clusters. So by attending this webinar, you will have the opportunity to become a lead client for the, uh, one of many of these new technologies and how to enhance your research through early access uh, to this uh, advanced technology, gain early knowledge uh, of upcoming infrastructure. If you have uh, planning uh, projects planned uh, for, for the near future, you can take this opportunity to gain early access to this technology and use them in your project. Uh, you can also influence our technology roadmap by either dropping new items in the roadmap or uh, providing us with some feedback and share insights and experience with others. We have a very good uh, industrial and academia participation. So we have speakers from Synopsys, Yediware, IBM, OneWay, Vectorblocks Computing, 
and academic uh, speakers from UBC, Simon Fraser University, École Polytechnique de Montréal, École Technologie Supérieure, New York University, and University of Toronto. So you can attend one of these events or, or uh, many of these events as you wish, and you can visit our website in order to register to these events. Back to the agenda. So we start this uh, webinar by a quick recap of artificial intelligence and application, just to give a general introduction. This is a widely used definition of AI. It's a theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and translation between languages. And machine learning is a subset of AI. It's uh, uh, about programming computers to optimize a performance criteria using example data or past experience. In order to understand the relationship between these uh, terminologies, so AI is a complete system that can sense, reason, act, and adapt. So there, is some, there should be some sensors there, and should be some interface to human in order to adapt to the environment. It uses machine learning, which is algorithms that improve as they are exposed to data. This is learning process. So imagine a, a machine learning algorithm that recognizes cats from other animals. The algorithm will improve by, uh, uh, by looking at new shapes of cats, new, new races of cats. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which is consists of a multi-layered neural network, uh, which is uh, designed more to learn from past amounts of data. Uh, the, this slide summarizes some of the area of specialization where I, AI is playing an important role in transforming almost every business. And also, it, there is exploding ecosystem of tools, frameworks like TensorFlow that we are presenting today, uh, which make it more accessible to even non-experts because the level of abstraction is raised enough to just use it without knowing all the details, uh, low-level details. Some of the area of specialization here, it is huge in gaming, natural language processing. If you have a smartphone or using, uh, for example, Siri or Alexa, you, 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 will, uh, you will see that uh, uh, this application use some of the machine learning and AI uh, in the cloud in order to recognize your, the words you are uh, speaking and also understand what you are trying to find in the, in the, in the internet. Uh, robotics is a huge field also computer vision and autonomous cars, which are pretty related and use a lot of algorithms uh, developed uh, uh, using machine learning, such as uh, the convolutional neural network, CNN, and other algorithms. So TensorFlow is a, a framework developed by Google, and it is the most uh, popular package in the ecosystem, but there are many other uh, frameworks that are available, and they are all here. And uh, I find this slide interesting to show the interest in deep learning uh, in the community uh, for each of these framework. TensorFlow is, uh, is, is the widely used. Uh, and these are <coughs> ranked according to the fork and star of each GitHub of this, uh, these frameworks. Cafe comes to in the second place and there are other, other frameworks as well. So, Let's now have a global or uh, a general overview on TensorFlow. Of course, it's, uh, it's, there is a lot of resources on the TensorFlow project website, but here I'm just showing people who are not familiar with this framework, how it works. <clears throat> and then we will uh, show how to install it on the HPD and how to use it, how to accelerate it on the heterogeneous processing platform. So what is TensorFlow? It's an open source uh, software library uh, from Google Brain Team for machine learning. It is especially good for training and implementing deep neural network. And it helps you to design, train, and develop uh, a deep, ne uh, deep neural network easily. Uh, it has a lot of primitives that help you to instantiate uh, uh, primitives and build a complex graph and use uh, uh, some accelerated libraries in order to accelerate these, uh, these uh, graphs uh, during execution time. Uh, it supports many language bindings, such as Python, C, Java, and Go, and support and provide pre-trained models that you can use uh, directly. 
And the examples of applications include image recognition, automated translation, and paint Google Photos and Translate. It is currently used in production at Uber, Snapchat, Google, and other applications, and widely used for ML. Here at the, the bottom of the slide, I show some statistics about it, things that you, you might already know. The, the programming style consists of uh, multiple layers. The most uh, important one is the one at the bottom, which is the TensorFlow distributed uh, execution engine. Uh, on top of this, we have the low-level TensorFlow APIs that uh, are the languages supported Python, C++, Java, and Go. Python is the, the, the mostly uh, supported in this project, as it offers other layers, such as data sets you can use Panda in order to import data sets uh, for training or for classification uh, or for testing, and uh, metrics in order to uh, calculate your, uh, your, uh, your precisions and accuracy, and high-level estimators that you can use and instantiate in your graph without coding them from scratch. So basically, these are the, 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 the different layers of the programming stack. Now, the basics of TensorFlow, uh, what you need to keep in the back of your mind is that uh, tensor flow means tensor and flow. It's comprised of nodes and edges. Nodes represent mathematical operation and edges represent multi-dimensional data array. So it's, it's a data flow graph. And uh, you, if in order to create one, you need to think first uh, about your graph, what is the model of your graph. <coughs> and uh, the mathematical operations and also the connection between your graph and the type of connection you have. Uh, the tensors uh, are the, the edges that connect the elements of the graph. It's a standard way of representing data and it can have, uh, it, it can have uh, different uh, dimensions. So from arrays to matrices to cubes. And uh, in order to differentiate these dimensions, we have something called rank. So here are the tensor rank. The first one is a scalar, is a magnitude only. For example, you define a number as, uh, as a magnitude. The second one, rank one, is a vector. So here you have a magnitude and direction. This, this, the second, the, the, the rank two, is a matrix. Here we have an example of a matrix of uh, three columns and three rows. And uh, you have the notion of a cube. So based on the nature of the problem you are trying to solve, you will choose your uh, tensor rank and you will define the value of it. So an image can be uh, a matrix, uh, a frame of video can be a cube. So you will define uh, these as uh, uh, depending on the problem you are trying to solve. As any programming language, there are different uh, type of data from 8-bit uh, uh, unsigned integer to more complex data type of 32-bit floating points. There are also a, a type of uh, complex numbers. So when you define your tensor, you need to declare them as a, as a variable or constant. And you need to specify the type of uh, data that will be uh, stored in that variable. So depending on your algorithm and the nature of the problem you try to solve, you choose the, the, the most uh, appropriate data uh, in order to have an optimized solution. So I explained the, what tensor means, how to <coughs> declare a tensor, how to choose the dimension. Now it's the elements of the graph or the nodes. <coughs> the nodes are mathematical operations. And in this table, we summarize uh, these mathematical operations from element-wise mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There are array operations that operate on array of data, matrices operation, for example, matmul mat is uh, a primitive that multiply two matrices, uh, matrix inverse, so you don't have to code these from scratch, they are already there. And uh, the most important element to highlight here is that when you use a GPU in your tensor flow, the runtime of uh, TensorFlow will call the most optimized function, which is the one that is available for the GPU, for example. And there are some other uh, more complex uh, functions, uh, such as the activation functions, neural net building block, 
these are really important in your model. Uh, it's uh, uh, it allow you to, uh, to to build an activation function in your graph, such as softmax, sigmoid, or elu. Uh, we'll have an example about relu and sigmoid in the next slide. So there are different functions, and as you dig deep in this uh, framework, you will learn more about these functions, use them, test them uh, to be more familiar with. So how it works. As I said before, uh, there are two things uh, that are very important. First of all is the computational graph and the tensors. So the tensors are the data that flow between the nodes of your graph. And here we have a very simple graph that take as input x and y, <coughs> do a matrix multiplication, and then add b to this uh, result. And the real function is the activation function. It's a rectified linear input. Actually, it uh, will uh, output zero if the input is negative, and it will just output the input if the input is positive. And here we have the uh, relo activation function graph that show how it works. And the sigmoid is another activation graph, is, is another activation function. So the, the, the selection of your activation function depends really about the problem that you are trying to solve. And this is not uh, our topic today to explain which function you're gonna use. Uh, you're gonna use the one that give you uh, optimized uh, uh, criteria or optimized results. So the program, as I said, can be divided into two sections. Uh, the computational graph is a series of operations arranged into graph of nodes and a session to run the computational graph. So when you build the graph, nothing happened until you create a session and run the session. When you run the session, the data starts flowing through the graph and you start evaluating results. And to show this for, with an example, uh, here I show at my left a Python example using TensorFlow. The primitive import TensorFlow means that you are going to use the TensorFlow framework. Uh, the first step is to define your tensors. Here we have two constants. You define a node that evaluates the multiplication between these two tensors. And the second step is to create a session and run the session. So at the first step, you're just creating nodes. And here you are, you are linking those nodes to an operation. And when you when you <laughs> When you execute pre pre print session run result, you are actually outputting the result. I even have more complex examples uh, containing multiple, many nodes, many layers, many activation functions, but this is the basic of TensorFlow program. The, uh, you can have more details about how to build these, uh, uh, these graphs uh, by uh, looking at the documentation available in the TensorFlow project. Uh, but uh, the, the, the main objective of the webinar is to show how to install it on the HPP and how to use it, how to accelerate it, with uh, some discussion around the, the potential of acceleration on the HPP. So the first thing is to distinguish between CPU and GPU. TensorFlow comes with two flavors. The first one is CPU only. Uh, it's for a system that does not have an NVIDIA GPU. And the second one is with GPU support. Of course, uh, TensorFlow would run significantly faster on a GPU than a CPU. The first requirement on the HPP, you need to install CUDA toolkit 9.0, including the drivers. And the second thing is the CUDA neural network library, which is an accelerated library of primitives. It is highly tuned implementation of, uh, for standard routines such as forward, backward, convolution, pooling, normalization, and activation layers. And it's part of uh, the GPU with CUDA computer capability 3.0 and higher. The last library uh, will help you to profile your application. So on the HPP, if you have the, 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 the CUDA 8.0 or 7.0, you need to uninstall it first before you install this. Uh, and uh, TensorFlow. So uh, using the GPU on a typical system, you have uh, uh, some TensorFlow definitions here. The uh, slash CPU zero is your, the CPU of your machine running the operating system. And you have the devices, GPU zero, GPU one. 
and you have uh, multiple GPU, other GPU they will show as devices and the GPU attached to it. And uh, when you execute a TensorFlow program, this is very important for performance. Um, if you execute a TensorFlow, the operation has both CPU and GPU implementation. The GPU device will be given priority when the operation is assigned to a device. This means that the runtime of TensorFlow will choose the implementation that is available on the GPU first. If it doesn't find it, then it will use the CPU implementation. And as an example, we have here uh, an example of uh, the, uh, the device placements. Uh, basically, you need to add in the code uh, a function that will show you which task run on which device. So after creating two matrices with uh, the first one two, column, two rows and three columns and the second one three rows and two columns, we evaluate a matrix multiplication A and B. And when we run, when we create the session, we set this variable to true, log device placement true. And after running the session, we will have the device mapping that uh, the runtime has selected for you. So the device mapping we have here, variable A and B are assigned uh, to the GPU. And we have here uh, the multiplication task is also due. So everything run on GPU because you didn't specify uh, uh, anything. So by default, the GPU uh, controls the whole execution. And this is a test like A40C, uh, and it show you which PCI bus is attached to. Now, if you want to do the initialization on the CPU and do the multiplication on the GPU, you need to specify it with this function, which is uh, with TF device. And now you specify that you will do the initialization on the CPU. So the runtime, when it's hit this line, it will uh, assign this to the, CP, to the CPU. And after that, since we don't show, we don't uh, force the, 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 the runtime to write on the, the GPU for the matrix multiply, it's right on the GPU. So we have here the results of our execution. Uh, the assignments are uh, done by the CPU and the multiplication is done by the GPU. This is how you control the execution of your TensorFlow program uh, to uh, different uh, accelerators. Now for the installation, uh, we, we need to follow the instruction on how to uh, install Anaconda on the download side. Once Anaconda is installed on your HTTP, you can issue Conda install TensorFlow GPU to install TensorFlow on your Conda environment. So then after that, you, uh, you create uh, a, a pipe uh, for Python uh, 2.7, activate the Conda environment, and then at the end, if everything goes well, you, you will have, uh, you can uh, source activate TensorFlow, your invite will change to TensorFlow, and then you can install the uh, TensorFlow inside your, your Anaconda uh, environment. So this is the installation. Uh, there will be a, a tutorial guide on how to install it and run it on the HPP. So I'm not giving too much details. Uh, I would, before going to the demo, uh, I would like to discuss a little bit uh, the potential of uh, TensorFlow acceleration on the HPP. And this is where AI applications meet heterogeneous computing. So before that, I would just want to highlight uh, a quote by uh, our CEO, Dan Gale. If you want to win a race, uh, an R&D medal in the machine learning race, great algorithm and data, won't get close to the podium without inspired hardware. The most important part of this is that the inspired hardware means that you need, uh, you need some acceleration uh, for the AI algorithms in order to make use of the, the vast amount of data available. And if you look at this uh, from the angle of IoT, from the edge of the network to the cloud, you have a lot of data everywhere. Uh, the edge of the network can be uh, embedded uh, hardware embedded systems that uh, process a lot of the data locally and send it to the cloud for even more processing. And the, the most significant barrier is the compute power capability uh, and uh, the power consumption at each level. 
So you really need uh, some uh, uh, rethinking about uh, the hardware in order to make full use of this data and uh, make AI application accessible uh, to users. So long time ago, AI algorithms were uh, executed in uh, uh, just uh, general purpose uh, processors. Then it comes the, the time where uh, the ASIC uh, accelerators uh, are built in order to accelerate some tasks like mathematical tasks. With the, the adoption of the GPG view at general purpose, it has a very uh, important uh, impact on the adoption of, uh, of uh, AI algorithm running on GPUs. And now we have the FPGA. So there's a lot of uh, hardware, a lot of heterogeneity. And uh, the most important challenge is how to map complex software to heterogeneous system. So the slide just to highlight why we need heterogeneous computing systems. So as you know, the, the frequency scaling has a dominant cause of processor performance uh, as cause of uh, in industry wide shift uh, from uh, general purpose core to multi core to heterogeneous system because of the power wall, the instruction level, parallelism wall, and the memory wall. And uh, the heterogeneous computing systems uh, that consists of many uh, arch uh, processor architecture uh, start to be available uh, everywhere. And uh, why? Because the applications uh, exhibit different type of behavior. So you need different type of uh, uh, processor architecture to effectively and efficiently run these uh, applications. For example, the applications that are mostly controlled, um, that are consists of search and parsing, data intensive applications such as machine learning, image video processing, computer vision, and compute intensive applications such as iterative methods, quantum simulation, and so on. So the gain of performance comes from the, the fact that we offload the right workload to the right processor architecture. In the context of the HPP, we have uh, a system with the host, interconnect, PCIe, and the uh, GPU, FPGA, ASIC, maybe in the future, quantum. And uh, the, this uh, heterogeneous architecture finds its way in two different spaces. At my left is the HPC space where you have servers with a lot of accelerators board attached to the system through PCIe. At my right is more the embedded space is low power. So the, the whole system is integrated inside the system on chip. And deep learning, the objective is how to accelerate it on these different architecture, programmable logic FPGA, GPGPU, and Zero 5. The GPUs, they are easily uh, programmable. Simply, you know, I just compare GPUs and FPGA. They offer massive floating point computational power. Lots of API, cheap for developers. It's available in the cloud. The bad side, it is very uh, super power hungry, expensive in, the, in data centers, and essentially no virtualization. CUDA, of course, is proprietary, so uh, the, you need to learn CUDA in order to program them. And uh, open languages such as OpenCL, they are still lagging and not very well supported. The FPGA on the other side, they are ultimate power efficient computing, and they offer massive parallelism. Uh, they offer multiple instructions on single data. One of the main advantages for FPGA, and especially for machine learning, is that is the low latency. So basically, you have low latency inside the chip. You have uh, compute elements uh, accessing very low latency local memory inside the chip. So you have distributed memory effect. But also you have uh, the deployment model, which consists of uh, deploying an FPGA in a data center where you have it connected straight to the network and you can process packets coming from the network directly. Uh, with your algorithm, so without going through the host. It is great uh, at replacing ASICs. And uh, of course, OpenCL uh, is making it available for application developers. And there is a lot of efforts by Xilinx and Altera in enabling AI on their FPGA boards. Um, the problem is they are difficult uh, to find in the cloud. A lot of IPs, are, they are really free. Uh, cheaper development kits, and uh, the ugly side is the compilances at this time, which take hours for a simple algorithm. 
So it is a diagram about the HPP. Just uh, to remind uh, what is the HPP, is a, a workstation that has multiple accelerators, uh, FPGA board, Xeon Phi, and a GPU. And it, I think it's a very good platform in order to do heterogeneous computing in different spaces, including machine learning. The HPP resources, so there is 32 systems, 60 users. Uh, there is a lot of uh, people using it. You can share your experience with these people. And uh, there is a lot of resources available in uh, the HPP uh, webpage. Um, this webinar, as well as the, uh, the tutorial design, will be available in the webpage uh, in the couple uh, of days. In a couple of days. This is uh, my last slide about uh, the platform that we are deploying. This is the CMDN Canada National Design Network Cloud roadmap. So we are planning for the next couple of months to deploy uh, traditional HPC infrastructure to support CAD tools with HPC support and uh, cluster heterogeneous computing nodes, which consists of CPU, GPU, and FPGA, which is uh, excellent to do machine learning in the cloud. So this will be deployed and you can access it uh, through CMC and uh, scale up the uh, VM infrastructure to add this things capability. So this is the, the roadmap. The key research area that I would like to highlight here. So this is where AI meets heterogeneous computing. And there is a need of unified AI with heterogeneous computing systems, including CPU, GPU, and FPGA. Now TensorFlow run on CPU and GPU, but it is difficult, still difficult to run it on an FPGA. Uh, I didn't see any solution there, but there are some hints how to use it and how to uh, integrate FPGA in flow. And I think this is a very good uh, research project. And the uh, deep learning acceleration on a cloud-based heterogeneous computing infrastructure. This is how to scale up from one, from, from one node to multiple nodes and make an application that is at the edge of the network accessible uh, using resources in the cloud. AI at the IoT edge, this is something very uh, increasing in demand because uh, there's a lot of data that can be processed locally by an embedded device at the edge. So what are the requirements and challenges uh, around this and how to solve them? Uh, there should be other research area that I'm highlighting one of the most important today. Now we are going to switch to the live demo. So before I switch to the live demo, I would like to show what I am going to demo today. The first thing, we are going to test the environment uh, for CUDA uh, and the drivers. So we are going to initialize uh, the environment and run a simple example. The second test we're going to do is the CUDA library, the CUDA neural network library. So we are going also to test it and see uh, if it works, uh, if it's uh, properly installed and it works. We are going to test the complex example uh, for this uh, uh, CUDA neural network. Uh, it will uh, show you uh, some uh, network layer top topology execution such as convolution, coding, uh, and fully connected graph. And the application we are testing is uh, trying, it will try to classify three images uh, located in a directory using a pre computed network weight. So we are like testing this uh, framework. And uh, if you're inspired in your HPP, this is a, a major requirement for the TensorFlow to run. So this is why we are taking some time to test it and show you how to test it. And we are going to validate the TensorFlow installation on the HPP, uh, with, uh, just the steps. Uh, I'm gonna show this uh, in my demo. I will switch now to the demo. So I'm going to share with you my terminal. And now we're gonna test the CUDA neural network library. So I'm gonna open a terminal and initialize the environment first. <coughs> then have my examples installed in NVIDIA CUDA samples. So I'm gonna to go to one of the examples that I have here and select, for example, the n-body. 
how it was compiled in the past. But let's go it again. <coughs> uh, we are going to execute it. So we're going to go to the release of M5. I will just go back to my previous directory and start again. I think the compilation didn't work, so I'm going to try it again. And if you make <clears throat> so now it's compiling using the CUDA uh, environment and uh, the software in order to compile. Now the result is copied to this directory, so I'm going to just go to it. And now I'm going to test my CUDA environment by issuing embody. So we have here a simulation <coughs> that is running uh, in order to know which device it's running on. So I'm gonna ju just remove this window. I will show here that you can select which device. Uh, the device that is run to is our Quadro K620. This is not the device we want to run this demo on. So we should do embody then issue a device name so let's see device equal, and then we give uh, an index. I think it's zero, so let's, let's check this. Yes, so we have here, it's running on Tesla k 40 c And this is exactly the, 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 the GPU that will be used to demo the intensive draw. So I'm gonna close this window. And now I'm going to go to the CUDA neural network library that uh, we need to test as well. So back to the example. <clears throat> Remember that all the variables are set in this terminal, so I, I don't need to do this again. So the examples are here. They should be downloaded separately from the installation of CUDA neural network. And I'm gonna run this sample. So we will just do a make. Uh, it's already compiled. Let's do make mean and make. Just to compile it again to show that the compilation works. And now we're going to test our model by issuing this command. So we have this already installed. and. If you have the test passed, it means that your uh, algorithm is, uh, your library is well installed and it's, it's working. So you have here some results about your convolutional forward algorithm and backward algorithm using different, uh, different parameters for soft max. So I encourage you to read more about this uh, example in order to understand, but this is just to show that, that it is working. Now we'll switch to the TensorFlow demo, so we'll go to the other window and open a new terminal. I need, of course, to set up my CUDA again. And I will start TensorFlow by using this command. So it's source, activate, tensor, no. <clears throat> so as you notice here, the invite has changed. So now we are inside TensorFlow. We run TensorFlow inside Anaconda environment. And now we're going to test a few examples I have here. So the first one is just a little hello world from Python. So we just type Python. 
Python form .py. So we have hello from TensorFlow. Now we, we have a more advanced example, just uh, the multiplication of two matrices. So once again, we do matmil.py. So we have the execution here. It runs on the GPU because we didn't specify which GPU, which uh, devices we want to run that, and it, sh it shows the result. The third one, and here we use uh, with TensorFlow CPU. This one should run on the CPU, and uh, the multiplication because we don't specify anything here, it will run on the GPU. So let, let's test it. So it's much you know, CPU mapping, and this is how you you map to a particular device. So we have the initialization of the two matrices on the CPU, and we have the execution taking place at the GPU. I think for more details about uh, the installation and uh, running examples, and uh, th there will be a tutorial and, and guide that will be uh, published at the same time as the uh, video of this webinar. Uh, if you have any question about the demo or anything, you can either contact me directly or shoot me an email. Uh, I will go back now to the presentation and uh, continue with the, the discussion. So I will do new share, go back to my presentation. Uh, so I will just uh, remind of the, the, the coming uh, seminar series. So there will be three seminar series, as I said in the beginning of the, of the webinar. We encourage you to attend, to give your feedback and uh, and, uh, explore the, the, the possibility to become lead clients of these technologies. Uh, there are some good industrial presentations and uh, academic presentations. It will be very exciting three events: uh, the March 16 at Vancouver, March 26 in Montreal, and April 16 in Toronto. Innovation 360, 360 is approaching as well, and we encourage you to keep an eye on this. So we are now. We we still have a few minutes in order to. I have some questions, so either you type your question on the mic or uh, type your question in the chat window or ask them directly. Is everybody muted? Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody is still muted, so if you're going to ask a question, uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Is there any question in the and there, I don't see any questions in the okay. chat room. So don't hesitate. You can ask any question about. Uh, uh, this is Mohammed Khaled. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, just curious uh, for TensorFlow. So far, there's uh, no support for accelerating on FPGAs. No, there is no support as as for now. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a good topic for research. So they they, they say it's possible. If you can implement, uh, they call it ops uh, for that. So you need to uh, build a library mm. like CUDA neural network, but more for FPGA mm. and find a way to invoke that library from TensorFlow runtime. And with uh, the uh, variable I show, uh, you can uh, force the map into the FPGA. I think it's, it's a very good uh, question. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Please do not hesitate if you have any questions or if you prefer to ask to send me an email about a question about this material, do not hesitate. We appreciate your feedback uh, at all time. And we are uh, looking forward for these three seminars where a lot of machine learning topics will be discussed. So you can show up and interact with, uh, with the companies that will be there, with the other researchers. So thank you very much for your attendance. And I think we're gonna close the webinar now. It will be available online. Uh, please do not hesitate me if you have any feedback or any question. Thank you very much.